towards opening the altar. So already in your heart, be prepared that this is a service where we're going to open the altars to be able to come and be touched by God wherever you need a touch by God. I know that some of you have come very specifically with needs. Some of you have come with a desire to be holy, with a desire to have the guilt and shame removed, with a desire to meet with God. You need provision. You need wisdom. You need the touch of God in your body. You need the touch of God in your mind and your family. At work with a situation you're going through, with a roommate situation that you're going through, a family situation. And I want you to know that the same God that healed 2,000 years ago and is healed in the Old Testament and New Testament is the same God that is with us today. Amen? Amen? God is here. And we need to believe that not only is the word of God being broken, meaning opened up and delivered at the Capital Life Church services, but following the word of God is the, is the active participation of the Holy Spirit in touching us in profound ways. And so there are a lot of churches that believe that you, 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 you preach the word of God and it ends there. You, that's not where it ends. God then grabs a hold of our lives and there's an application to the word. There's an application for you. There's an application in how we uh, walk through the rest of our week. So let's look in Matthew. In the eighth chapter, in the first four verses, Jesus has just completed the Sermon on the Mount. He now comes down off the mountain. And uh, in coming down off the mountain, he enters into the trenches. And, uh, and I sometimes think of the analogy of church being like a mountaintop experience. We do hear the word of God. We are encouraged. We're seated right now around fellow believers. If you only knew their story, if you knew some of the stories of the people that you're seated around right now, to your left, to your right, in front of you, behind you, you would be amazed by the miracle working power of God. You would be amazed by the way that God loves and participates in our lives. And in the now, in the now, even as Priscilla was talking about, and so we see that this analogy of the church being where we're encouraged by who we're with, we're with fellow believers. We are cut out of the same cloth. We believe that God lives. We believe that his son, Jesus, is our savior and Lord, that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead three days later, even as the scriptures have stated. And we believe that our God is a healing God, that Jesus took by the stripes he took on his back, we were healed. And we believe in the scriptures. We believe in the Old Testament, the New Testament. We believe Jesus is coming again to bring those that believe in him uh, along with him. And we believe these things. We believe them because they're stated in scripture. So it's a mountaintop experience. But the reality is, is that the rest of the week is getting into the trenches. And if we only live mountaintop by mountaintop, but never see how the scriptures apply to the trenches the rest of the week, then we've missed it. If we don't see what God wants to do in and through us through the rest of the week, then, then this thing called Christianity is nothing more than a club. We must live out our faith. Amen? Amen. 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 And so Jesus comes down off the mountain. Immediately, immediately, he encounters one in need. I can tell you that sometimes before we really get out of this building, we encounter somebody in need after a service, or we round a corner in our vehicle and we see somebody in need, or, or whatever it may be. Maybe we've been going into Monday and Tuesday at work. There's somebody in the cubicle next to us, and there's need that's there. And that's the moment for our faith to come alive, for our convictions to translate into actions, for, for the empowerment of God to go through us and touch another person in another life. There are people, and you know what I'm talking about, there are people right there at your work and that you'll be with this week that need to know that God loves them. They must know that God's real. There are people that are around you that are in desperate situations and they need to know that your God is able. Well, Jesus encounters somebody with such a need and it's immediate. Let's read through those first four verses of Matthew in chapter 8. When he came down, meaning Jesus, from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately he was cured of his leprosy. Then Jesus said to him, see that you don't tell anyone 
But go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift Moses commanded as a testimony to them. So that's our text today. I want to look through this a little bit to really get a sense of what is happening, to get a better understanding of it. In verse 2, we are introduced to a man, and all that we're told, and it's really just one word to really help us understand something about this man. Verse 2 says, a man with leprosy. Man with leprosy. Doesn't say his name. Just a man with leprosy. That description immediately boxes him. Immediately there's a sense in which we feel we know him. We understand him now. He's a man with leprosy, so immediately we label him man with leprosy, and that causes us to respond to him in a certain way. Now, There are descriptive words or labels in the D.C. metro area. I don't know how many of you have been labeled since being out here, but I can tell you, you get labeled in this area probably more than in most areas of the United States of America. Do you know what I'm talking about? You get labeled immediately, labeled whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, a conservative or a liberal. You'll get labeled right away young, old. You'll get labeled right away as to whether or not if somebody's homeless, they label you as homeless. They label you as a churchgoer. They label you as a non-churchgoer. You're labeled, constantly labeled so that people feel comfortable then in putting you in a box. And when you're in that box, then they try and keep you in that box because they feel comfortable with you being within a simple description or a simple label. That's prolific in the D.C. metro area. This man is labeled by Matthew as a leper. Now, first of all, I'm glad that when we see these multitudes that are coming down off the mountain after the Sermon on the Mount, the greatest sermon ever preached, this one that I'm preaching now is the second best, um, (laughs) multitudes of people, and then all of a sudden it turns into the story of one man. And that's what I want to do in just taking on these four verses is get us to understand this man. I want you to get to a point where you understand these four verses of Scripture to understand God's heart as as to what was happening 2,000 years ago with this leper whose name we do not know. Matthew labels him as a leper. And with that label, all of a sudden, we feel like we understand. But do we really? There are some people who have labeled you, and they've labeled you in such a way, and they placed you in a box. I want you to know God's going to let you out of the box today. God's going to allow you to be set free. You're going to be free from the statements of others, the things that people have said. Some of those people may be relatives of yours. Some of those people may be someone that you used to date or, or, or a boss or a colleague of old. I want you to know that you're going to be set free today because Jesus does just that. He whom the Son sets free is what? Free indeed. 